Built in 1889, the Whitworth was created with one aim, to act for the perpetual gratification of the people of Manchester. This has remained its guiding principle throughout its many years, numerous expansions and reinventions. With today's refurbishment and new build extension, the public areas of the Whitworth are now 30% larger. This is the result of an ambitious vision to extend the gallery and to underline its connection to the park, local community and the university, yet to retain the building's late Victorian architectural heritage. The result is a transformation into a 21st century gallery in the park, creating a stimulating visitor experience. Supporting its significant expansion, a major engineering challenge was to reduce the building's overall carbon footprint by at least 10%. To do this sensitively, Bureau Happold Engineering developed an innovative conservation strategy. For example here, the new parts of the building and trees shelter the gallery and collection stores, meaning that temperature and humidity can be balanced without the need for mechanical cooling or humidification, greatly reducing energy use and running costs. The architect's vision involves stripping out the 1960s suspended ceilings in the main gallery to reveal the original barrel vaulted interior. Having developed a light touch conservation strategy, Bureau Happold was able to integrate the building services as invisibly as possible. Firstly, the original sun vents were replaced and connected to new extract ducts. Next, visually unobtrusive mechanical ventilation was installed in the ceiling to control temperature and humidity. And thirdly, light activated blinds helped to regulate room temperature. To date, collections have been stored in locations around Manchester, but have now been brought together in house. To create the space, redundant cooling equipment was removed from the basement, which was then further excavated. For this store, we implemented a passive-first, low-carbon conservation approach in accordance with current guidance for the storage and exhibition of archival materials. In the garden courtyard, a breeze soleil facade and high-performance glass minimises heat from the sun entering the building, whilst maximising daylight and views, combining architectural expression with the engineering purpose. Its design involved detailed solar exposure research and analysis. A powerful projector, carefully camouflaged into the penthouse roofing, provides the facility for screening dramatic visual expositions into the garden space. Also on the roof are hidden solar panels that contribute more than 18,000 kilowatt hours per annum to the building's hot water supply. The art garden earns its keep too, concealing tubes that run horizontally under the surface. They pre-cool air in summer and preheat it in winter before taking it into the building. The garden also hides ground source heat pumps, extracting heat for the building from deep underground. And finally, these benches hide the inlets to the ventilation tubes that provide fresh air for the building. Moving through, the cafe has been transformed into a pavilion in the park, a glass box from which to look back into the galleries. Solar shading is provided by mirrored dots printed onto the glass, which also work to reflect the park from the outside. These fade out towards the bottom of the glass to give a clear view from inside to out. Invisible natural ventilation is integrated into the floor edges and the ceiling. In total, the Whitworth has become a building where art, nature and architecture combine to create a unique visitor experience. It is an example of where our inspired and collaborative integrated engineering approach has been delivered almost invisibly, enabling the architectural vision to be realised. Our conservation control strategy was put to the test during the heat waves of the gallery's first summer. Peak temperatures within the building were within the limits we predicted during our research and modelling. It is part of the Whitworth's mission that this pioneering approach to conservation can be replicated globally, taking art to venues and countries that might otherwise find conventional climate control too costly. <laughs>